In this video, I'm going to give a simple overview explanation of Javadoc. I'll talk about why we use Javadoc, where we put it, some syntax rules, and some special tags that we can use in Javadoc. This presentation isn't intended to give you a complete, unabridged, comprehensive description of everything that you can do with Javadoc. Instead, it's really aimed at a software developer, and here's what you need to know about Javadoc to be efficient and to use it the right way. So first of all, Javadoc, why do we have it? It's the official way that we write API documentation for our Java classes and our methods. We'll typically put Javadoc above a class or above a method, but not inside a method. And number two, it gives a consistent look and feel. There's a tool called Javadoc that can parse through a Java source file, look at the Javadoc, and then generate HTML documentation from it. And you've probably seen it before. This is what Javadoc looks like when you do any of these API documentation searches and you come across a page like this. Generally, it was generated by Javadoc. So the same documentation that you look at to do research in Java, you can create from your own application. So where do we want to put it? Javadoc will generally go above a class, specifically a public class, and also above a method, specifically a public method. You can put it above private classes and private methods if you want. That's generally helpful for another developer. But public classes and public methods, that's where we definitely want to put some Javadoc. We don't want to put it inside of a method. Inside of a method, we, we could do multi-line comments, but single-line comments are more common. But really, sometimes inline documentation is frowned on because inline documentation, that is documentation or comments within a method, can sometimes indicate that a program was written cryptically with a lot of symbols that have to be explained. And in lieu of using inline documentation, most developers just prefer code that's readable. Keep in mind, one of the best ways to learn something is to snap a breakpoint and just walk through it at your own pace. That's often the approach that I will take when I need to understand how a program works. There is one interesting case. If you have a method in a class and it is implementing a method from an interface, as long as that interface has proper Javadoc that describes what the method is doing, then that Javadoc can be inherited from the interface to the implementing class. Similar case for superclass subclass relationship. If you have a method that is overwriting another method and the overridden method has adequate Javadoc, then that Javadoc can be inherited. But one footnote, a Javadoc should really describe what a method does and what it does uniquely from other methods. So many times you'll find it is to your benefit to go ahead and add Javadoc to an overridden method because it's probably doing something a bit more specific. Now the format that we'll use with Javadoc is any kind of HTML tags, P, A, code, U, L, L, I, these are common tags. There's some special tags that are used and we'll take a look at those in the next slide. Now the first sentence of our Javadoc should be a summary of the method or class and then after that we can go into deeper explanation. We'll generally consider each line to have an 80 character max length at which point we'll need to start a new line. Uh, phrases, in other words, doesn't have to be complete sentences. Phrases are fine. And generally, we'll use a third person tone. And we'll also adhere to the multi line format, which is the slash on a US keyboard. That's a slash on the question mark key, followed by two asterisks on the first line. And then the last line is an asterisk and a slash. Optionally, you can have asterisks that start each line after that. That's fairly typical. So, some of the tags that we're going to see author, who wrote it? This one I've seen used less and less as time goes on for the pure reason of version control. Uh, we don't need to look at Javadoc to see who wrote something when we can look at version control and see very specific changes and who made those changes. Version. Uh, version is a software version number. These two tags are typically on classes and interfaces. Now, the next two are much more common. Param, which describes an implicit parameter, and that goes on methods and constructors. And then at return, we'll describe a return value that goes on methods only. Reason being, constructors by default return a new object, and that's a given. A few more tags here. At exception describes any exception that might be thrown back from this method. So that's one's going to be method specific. At C is a reference to another method or other Javadoc. At since describes something that has changed in a recent version. So it might say, this is effective since version 14, for instance. 
at serial is a unique identifier. I rarely see that one used. And then at deprecated simply means that this method or this class is no longer of use. Here's a look at some Javadoc that I have created. So you see we have the multi-line comment above the class, and I'm just describing what the class is. So first our summary line, then a bit of HTML that breaks it out into a couple of paragraph tags, and then finally the author tag. So that's class level Javadoc, somewhat concise. Uh, I could probably put a few more words here, but I want to give a developer an idea of what this class is for. Now let's scroll down and look at Javadoc that I've put above a method as well. So we see here, here's post mapping, and I have my one line summary, create a new specimen object given the data provided. Now because this is a RESTful service, I want to describe the possible HTTP status codes that can get returned as well. So 201 means we've successfully created a new specimen, while 409 means I'm unable to create a specimen because it already exists. And while these status codes are well known, their specific implementation in a specific API may not be so clear. And so that's where it's handy to describe them here. Now, a few more things, at param. Note that the at param should match the list of parameters that are passed into the method. So here I have only one parameter, I have only one at param tag. If I accepted another parameter, I'd simply have another at param tag. So you should have about as many at param tags as you have parameters. Now at return, you'll typically only have one of those because in that case, you're looking at the return value. So this is Javadoc. We could run the Javadoc tool and actually generate that documentation, but I will say the vast majority of the time, 99.99% of the time I've used Javadoc, has simply been as I'm looking through somebody's code, as I'm debugging through it, and I'm trying to figure it out. So can be formatted, but most programmers are going to know it this way. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.